Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for all that wonderful feedback on my very first feng shui video. It was breaking down the feng shui basics. It seems that you guys are really into this topic, so I'm actually going to commit to making this a full-blown series. I am so excited to do that because, you know, I've been studying feng shui for so long now and I've actually been implementing it into my own life since I was a teenager. I really want to show you guys how to bring all that good luck and fortune into your lives. So if you're looking to create more harmony, more balance, and more auspicious energy into your home, this series is for you. Today, we'll be talking about mirrors in feng shui, where to place them, how to use them, and why mirrors are one of the most popular decorative items to use as a feng shui cure. Let's jump right into it. Mirrors help to amplify or double the amount of energy that it's reflecting. According to basic feng shui principles, mirrors are really great at reflecting light and harnessing that positive energy. But on the flip side, mirrors may also increase that energy and help direct it in the opposite way. If you need to activate a stale corner of your home that's not receiving a lot of love, a lot of light, or a lot of positive energy, you may want to place a mirror there just to harness that good chi and attract more energy in that area. Mirrors are also really great for doubling up on the prosperity, sending all the good vibes out, and sucking all of that negative energy in. You should pay special attention to specific feng shui guidelines so that you avoid misusing or overusing mirrors. As much as mirrors can provide a really great source of positive feng shui energy, when improperly used, mirrors can have negative consequences that affect your health, your sleep, your body image, and really your mindset. So let's jump right into where to place mirrors in your home for good feng shui and positive chi. Mirrors in the bedroom are an absolute no, no, no. You should never place mirrors opposite your bed because all of that active energy that reflects back at you will keep you awake when you're trying to sleep and rest. Just think when you're in your bedroom, you're trying to get a good night's sleep, mirrors are just going to bounce back that energy and then keep all the activity alive in your space. A mirror above the bed is not good feng shui. Apart from the practical sense of not having something heavy over your head, I mean, it might fall on you when you're sleeping, you just don't want to have all of that crazy energy looming over your head as you're trying to sleep. On the flip side, it's not good to have it behind your back either because it's just gonna reflect all of that energy. It's bouncing back and forth, and really, you're just trying to get a good night's sleep. I remember when I was younger, it's one of the things that my feng shui master taught me that I never forgot. He was telling my mom that you should never have mirrors in the bedroom, especially when it reflects the bed. If you're sleeping in bed with your partner or significant other, it's almost as though you're introducing like an affair. So imagine it's like a stranger in your bed with you. So ever since then, I never forgot that you should never place mirrors in the bedroom. But if you're single, and you have a mirror that's reflecting your bed or a body part, it just means that you are going to introduce like a malady or like an ailment to that portion of your body. So make sure that none of your body parts are reflected in the mirror so that you don't, you know, just happen to come up with some like horrible medical condition. However, as an interior designer, the only time that I would recommend having mirrors in the bedroom are when you flank them above the nightstands. So imagine that you have symmetrical nightstands that are right next to the bed. If you put those mirrors above those nightstands and you're reflecting something really beautiful like a table lamp or like a really gorgeous pendant fixture, I mean, you're just amplifying the energy in that room when you turn the lights on. That is the only time and case that I would put mirrors in the bedroom. If there's a really beautiful landscape and a view right outside your window, then I would place a really large mirror directly opposite that window. You're inviting all of that beautiful scenery in. You have a little bit more nature. You know, the birds are chirping, flowers are in bloom. It just makes you feel good, and that is a positive chi that you're trying to amplify. However, just like the bedroom scenario, you absolutely do not want to place a mirror behind a sofa. So just imagine that you're sitting on the sofa and you should have like a protective wall behind you. And a protective wall doesn't mean you have a mirror there and then all of this energy is bouncing back and forth and it's hitting your head. If you have a really large sofa or like a seating area, you definitely want to put it on the side or at least in the center. If there's like an accent table in the middle, then you can flank like two accent chairs on the side. Mirrors in the dining room are an absolute yes, 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 yes. 
Why? This is Feng Shui 101. Placing a mirror next to the dining table has been a really popular cure for wealth and abundance. It symbolizes that there's always food on the table to eat and there's a beautiful and happy family surrounding it. Mirrors in the bathroom are an absolute necessity. I mean, if you're looking at your sink right now, I'm pretty sure there's a mirror above it so that you could brush your teeth and wash your face, and then there's like a really beautiful light fixture above it. In that case, the mirror is a very practical solution to what you need to do. What you absolutely don't want to do is have the mirror reflecting something negative like your toilet or your trash can. So as long as the mirror is reflecting your face or really beautiful scenery outside, you are all good in the bathroom. Generally speaking, mirrors in the entry are really bad feng shui. Just imagine you are opening your front door. We're talking about putting a mirror directly facing that front door. All of the great energy comes through your home and then all of a sudden it's bounced right back out the door. So most people would say it's a really good idea to put a mirror kind of perpendicular to your door. So once the chi travels into your home, it has a place to land and kind of meander around instead of just kind of being reflected back out. However, I do have to admit that I do place a mirror right at my front entry door and I'll tell you why. Once you open the front door, I have a mirror there and what the mirror is reflecting is my really beautiful courtyard. I have a completely private courtyard with like a really huge wooden gate. This courtyard takes such a huge portion of my home and it actually squares off my home in a way where I want that really beautiful chi to kind of like travel all over through my courtyard into my front door and around my home. So I believe that once you really master the symbols in feng shui and you really learn how to use mirrors, it could work for you and not against you. Mirrors are generally not a good place for the office because it's just too much activity bouncing back and forth when you should be focused on the task at hand. The reflection is actually a distraction from your studies and especially when it's reflecting like a pile of paperwork or even your laptop or even a keyboard, you're just symbolizing that it's doubling up the workload for you. You really have to be very strategic about mirrors in the kitchen. You absolutely do not want that mirror facing a stove because a stove equals fire and fire is just too much active energy. The rule of thumb for using mirrors in the kitchen is when you only want to use it as a cure of canceling elements out. What does that mean? If you have a condition in your kitchen where the stove is directly across from the sink, you'll know that the stove equals fire and the sink equals water. So water and fire will cancel each other out, which means the really great chi that's kind of activated in your kitchen will be completely canceled out, which means it's bad feng shui. So if you want to use a decorative mirror to cure that situation, I would place the mirror next to the stove so it's not reflecting the fire, but it's reflecting the water. So it'll help to reactivate that beautiful chi that you want in your kitchen. So now that we've gone from room to room, let's break down some of the simple rules to follow. Rule number one, you want to avoid placing two mirrors facing each other. All of that energy is just going to bounce back and forth and it causes a lot of discomfort and distress. It'll also cause a lot of impatience and restless energy in the home. Rule number two, never place a mirror at the end of a very long hallway. Having a mirror at the end of a hallway or a walkway or a really narrow passage just attracts more negative energy. The only time I recommend placing a mirror at the end of a hallway is if you lack a lot of natural light and you have like a really beautiful light fixture there that you need to bounce back into the space. Rule number three, avoid placing a mirror directly across a transparent glass door or a window. Especially if the window has a lot of mullions on it, you know that little grid that you see? All of the positive energy is broken up by the mullions and all you're doing is doubling up on that negative energy and bouncing it back into your home. Okay guys, so are you ready for a little pop quiz? I wanna test your knowledge on using mirrors in feng shui. Can you place a mirror directly across from your front door? The answer is no. Remember that you wanna attract good chi and not bounce it right out of your house. Can you place a mirror facing your bed? The answer is no. How about above your bed? Again, this is no. You don't wanna have that mirror collapsing on you and you also don't wanna have all of that energy swirling over your head when you're trying to rest. Can you place a mirror behind a sofa? This is another no. Since you'll have your back on the sofa and that mirror behind you, that's just too much restless energy bouncing around. 
Can you place a mirror across the dining table? The answer is an astounding yes. If there's only one place that you should put a mirror in your home, it is absolutely across from your dining table. Can you place a mirror at the end of the hallway? The answer is no. Unless you're trying to cure a really negative space with poor light, then mirrors at the end of a hallway are an absolute no-no. Because mirrors reflect the energy of what's in front of them, you can use mirrors to duplicate whatever it is that you want more of. Whether it's a beautiful view or a collection of books or your favorite art pieces or even treasured photos of your family and loved ones, you want to use mirrors to reflect what you want to see more of in your life. So remember the rule of thumb. It's not a good feng shui to reflect less inspiring things in your life, like your garbage or the toilet or a looming pile of paperwork in your office, even the laundry basket, anything that symbolizes more work and less joy in your life. Remember that feng shui practice is all about symbolism. You wanna learn how to recognize symbols in feng shui and use items like decorative mirrors as a cure-all for your health, your wealth, and your overall well-being. When you consciously understand how to duplicate what brings you more joy, you can then magnify this energy into your home and then it starts trickling to every single facet of your life. Thank you so much for coming on this feng shui journey with me, guys. I'm so excited to start this new series. If you guys have any questions on how to use mirrors in your own home or in a particular circumstance in your own room, please drop me a line in the comments below and I'll be sure to answer it as best I can. If you like this type of content, please give this video a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for watching, you guys. I'll see you in the next one.